Hey, I'm Scott Appleton. I'm Alex Lifeson's guitar tech with the band Rush, and we're going to take a look at Alex's rig. Uh, we're going to start right here with the amp rack. Uh, what we have is we have three different Hughes and Kettner amplifiers. Two of the uh, Triamp uh, amplifiers, the one on the top, is the main amplifier with Alex's wet signal. We do run all of our effects in mono, so it just runs through the effects loop on this particular amp right here. The one below it is an identical amplifier set up identically. Uh, it is set up dry though, there are no effects on this amplifier whatsoever. So we can blend the two out of front of houses. Uh, on the bottom amp is the uh, Hughes & Kettner Core Blade amplifier, which has all of its own internal effects. So Alex uses this amplifier as kind of an extra man on stage, if you will. Behind me right here is the backup rig. So we actually have a full complement of all the amplifiers that are set up in a backup scenario right here. All the effects are running through a fractal audio axe effects down here. So that is our, our entire backup effects processor for that one. The main effects come from the majority of this rig right here, this rack right here. Uh, we start at the top, which is uh, the Crybaby. The sound comes off of Alex's wireless into the Crybaby. We actually use the VCA off of the, off the Crybaby. Not a lot of artists do, but uh, it sounds great and it works fine. So Alex is using that for his main volume control, as well as the Wawa, obviously. Uh, it then goes to the uh, Mesa Boogie amp selector, which then sends out the signal to the front end of all of these amplifiers. We can uh, select via MIDI. From there, we go through a couple of noise gates and some uh, Access Electronics GFX4 switchers. Those switchers send out all the signal to, well, they, they switch the signal on and off to the effects in the rack. Starting at the top, we've got the TC Electronics 1210, and we have four uh, TC Electronics G-forces, which are basically configured uh, in this manner. The top, one, uh, the top two are set up uh, strictly for delays. The third one is set up primarily for reverbs, and it does also do some pitch shifting and some slight flanging from time to time. And the fourth one is just set up exclusively for flanging. He has an Access Electronics FX1 on stage that he can turn each of these effects on and off individually. From there, we all the outputs of these go back to a uh, Digital Music Corp uh, ground, uh, I'm sorry, system mix. And that in turn it, uh, goes back into the top, uh, the effects return of the top amplifier right here. All of the speaker outputs from these amplifiers go to the Palmer PDI-03 speaker simulators. Uh, there are no microphones on stage. It's all done via the Palmer. Below that, we've just got a Furman power conditioner, which is the main power source for our entire rig. Uh, you'll notice that we have a PC on top of the, of the rack here. This is our wireless management software from Audio-Technica. And that will uh, segue over into the other rack over here, which is our wireless units. So we've got uh, eight of the Audio-Technica wireless units and two of the uh, Electrosonics units inside this rack. The main wirelesses that we use on the electrics are the uh, Audio Technicas, as well as the uh, mandolin in the show. So all of those get, uh, the signal comes out of those into uh, RGM Music Technology IS-8, which is an input selector, eight inputs, four outputs. The electrosonics, actually we use one of those for the 12 string during the show. The other ones, we actually have, uh, on Alex's guitars, there is a piezo pickup built in on the new Alex Lifeson model into the GraphTech bridge. The outputs from those come through another IS-8 down here on the bottom and then into a Fishman Aura system. It's not really the proper way to use a Fishman Aura system. <laughs> They'll tell you that, that that's not your way you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to use an acoustic guitar, but it works out quite nicely with a piezo pickup as well. From there, those sounds go to the monitor mixer in front of house. So here we have uh, all of Alex's guitars for the 2011 tour. Uh, probably the main points that we'll hit right here are uh, the Alex Lifeson model that just came out from Gibson. This is uh, Alex Lifeson number one, serial number one. Uh, very nice uh, access style guitar, a Les Paul style guitar from Gibson. Uh, first thing you'll note is the neck joint in the back, which is really nicely contoured. You have access to every fret on the instrument. We have some custom pickups actually wound for these model for this model right here. Uh, you'll notice that we do have a Floyd system on here as well from GraphTech, uh, which this does house the GraphTech Ghost uh, piezo pickup system in it. This is uh, Alex Lifeson serial number three, so with the beautiful crimson red, but wonderful guitar as well. All the same. Uh, 
Same features as the last one with the two volumes, master tone, piezo uh, volume right there. Set up with a 10 to 46 design. This is uh, Alex's original 355. Um, wonderful guitar, been around obviously, you know, all Rush fans will, will recognize this one right off the bat. Amazing instrument, very, very skinny neck, which we were talking about earlier. It's uh, virtually almost the same size as like a Rickenbacker or something like that. So uh, with as large a hands as Alex has, I'm surprised he's able to play this guitar, but he does it very well. This is uh, Alex's 91 CE from PRS. Uh, great little guitar as well. So got the original short uh, heel on this one that they no longer have. People will probably recognize that. This is a uh, Fender 52 reissue Telecaster. This is actually one of Alex's primary writing guitars. Uh, just a stock 52 reissue, nothing fancy about it. Uh, other than the finish has been sanded off on the back of the neck a little bit. Brass saddles on it, uh, sounds like a million bucks. As you'll notice too, we have a lot of other Les Pauls in here as well. Uh, one we, we uh, affectionately term as Big Al, which he uses. It's the uh, standard Les Paul black one with the Floyd Rose on it, as well as uh, Les Paul All Access, which we use for a drop D tuning. We take the entire guitar down a whole step. Um, we've obviously got another uh, custom in there as well. Also a 58 reissue as well too. So that one also has the uh, piezo electronics in it on the bridge. We are our Les Paul uh, laden, Les Paul heavy in a very good way. That's the uh, Martin HD 28 12 string. Uh, wonderful guitar that Alex uses uh, for a little instrumental bit before a um, couple of songs in the show. Up here on stage we've got Alex's pedal board, which as you can see is the XS Electronics FX1. Alex changes things a bit differently from most guitar players in the fact that the access only controls the effects portion of his rig and the switch below it is a uh, Hughes and Kettner switch for the amplifiers. What you're looking at from, uh, from left to right here, the first switch on the end, the little uh, boss looking sustain switch is actually a switch that is used to turn the piezo electronics on and off of his uh, electric guitars. Next to it is his volume pedal. Next to that is the Ernie Ball wah controller for the, for the wah that you see inside the rack on the main rig. Uh, the FX1, the controller for the amplifiers, and then there's a secondary switch for the piezo pickups as well. Uh, just allows Alex a little bit more access if he's playing the, the, uh, the pedals, you know, in order to, to get to it rather than having to jump all the way to the opposite end of the effects board to, to, to turn the, uh, the piezo off. Uh, up in the upper left corner over there, you will see that is a tube Nixie clock that is just there for, uh, for decoration at this point, just to kind of add a little something to the steampunk theme. So. But uh, also you've obviously got the Korg uh, pedals there, the keyboard pedals, where Alex plays all of his samples and things on the floor. When you see Alex up here doing the pedal dance, he's probably playing keyboards as well as his pedal, you know, his changing effects all at the same time. He'll, he'll, <laughs> he'll stand there with two feet doing it all at the same time. Sometimes during the show it's kind of, kind of funny to watch, but he's very good at it. The keyboard, this one is strictly used for time standstill. So Alex comes out and plays some of the bass line during time standstill as well as the keyboard line during the, uh, during the choruses. All right, so behind you we have the, uh, the world famous steampunk rig from Alex. Uh, these cabinets were actually made from a prop company in Toronto, but do bear the Hughes and Kettner logo, obviously. Uh, inside each one of these there is a Hughes and Kettner Statesman 212 cabinet in the top portion right underneath the Hughes and Kettner logo. Uh, also, we, he's probably the only guitar player in the world who has three 32-inch LCD TVs in his rig and shoots steam as well. The little pipes you see next to the, uh, to the like little mugs up there on the sides of the amp shoot cryo out of it from our pyrotechnician guys. Uh, it looks like steam. It's actually quite cold, so you don't want to stick your hand in there when it's going off, but uh, a very, very nice effect. It'll shoot probably about 10, 12 feet out of there. There you go, Alex Lyson's rig. Right.